I want you to hit me as hard as you can. Hey everybody, it's time for another Best Movie You Never Saw, and this week we're taking a look at David Cronenberg's much neglected Existence. Fairly big budget for the era, Existence was Cronenberg's follow up to his widely controversial Crash, a movie that infamously mixed car chases and sex, earning it an NC 17 rating while in the UK it came very close to being banned and indeed was banned in the West End. Existence would mark David Cronenberg's return to genre, with it his first real science fiction film since Naked Lunch, and probably his most commercial fare since The Fly way back in 1986. To that end, he was given a pretty decent budget, about $15 million US, and the film was a co-production between his usual backers, Alliance Atlantis in Canada, with his longtime patron being Robert Lantos, and the Weinstein Brothers genre wing of Miramax, Dimension Films. Able to secure a buzzy cast, including rising star Jude Law, who was mere months away from breaking out with an Oscar nomination for the talented Mr. Ripley, Jennifer Jason Lee, who declined reshoots on Stanley Kubrick's Eyes Wide Shut to do this film, and the always great Willem Dafoe. Allegra Geller, you've changed my life. Existence, on the outset, looked like it was going to be the director's biggest hit in over a decade. Alas, it came and went with nary a peep, despite good reviews, only earning $2.8 million worldwide. A tremendous loss, and indeed, Cronenberg would have a hard time financing his next film, Spider, which starred Ray Fiennes and was done for a shoestring. Likely, he would bounce back commercially with back-to-back -back Viggo Mortensen hits, A History of Violence, and Eastern Promises, which were probably his best-funded and most widely seen films in years. Unfortunately, Existence slunk into undeserved obscurity. Watching Existence now, you have to think that maybe Christopher Nolan gave it a watch before doing Inception, with its game within a game structure setting up a film that you're never quite sure is actually taking place in the reality set forth in this film. As much as something like Dark City was a precursor to The Matrix, Existence feels like a precursor to Inception. Jennifer Jason Leigh plays an almost messianic video game designer on the run from Zealots, who put a fatwa on her life, something Cronenberg was inspired to write after interviewing Salman Rushdie, who infamously had a fatwa placed on him after the publication of The Satanic Verses. In this movie, she's accompanied by a low-level employee for her company, played by a very young Jude Law, and the two try to test out her new game, Existence, in order to make sure that the compromised data is still good after the pod that she uses takes a bullet, or rather a tooth, but we'll get to that. The idea of virtual reality gaming, as it's depicted here, is quite intriguing, as is the fact that Existence was released mere weeks after The Matrix, with both taking a similarly biological approach to virtual reality, although Cronenberg's film is a whole lot grosser, with orifices being drilled into people's spinal columns and such. There are many shots of people lubing up the drilled-in holds, giving it a sexual context that's pretty hard to shake, with Lee's character the aggressor in many ways, while Law is just along for the ride. The two are virtually never off screen as we're experiencing this reality from the perspective throughout. The only hint that we get that the reality is a little bit different is that whenever they go into different parts of the game, their hairstyles change. The pods that are used to branch them into the game are unmistakably Cronenbergian, with them looking like grotesque biological mistakes out of Videodrome, with people plugging in with something that, I guess, kind of looks like umbilical cords. And don't even get me started on the film's weaponry, with the weapon of choice being a gun that's made of bone and fires teeth. There's even a nauseating scene where Law has to lick the flesh off the bones in order to craft it into a weapon. And this is Cronenberg at his absolute grossest, but maybe his most unforgettable. Of course, the teeth bullets are pretty gross too, and one of them even has a cavity. As gory as the movie is at times, and it features loads of scenes with people getting bullet teeth blasted into their flesh, it's not uniquely violent in David Cronenberg's filmography. He's always been into body horror, and that impulse gets a real workout here, especially with the pods and the ports that look like, well, you know. 
This isn't quite evil twin gynecologists in Dead Ringer's level of creep or even the stomach cavity in Videodrome, but I have to say that Cronenberg is a special kind of guy and maybe this wasn't that commercial a film after all. Now Jude Law was very young here and is almost unrecognizable compared to the smoother, tougher guy we know today. Here you really believe him as this kind of naive guy, while Lee is cast radically against type as the seductive, vampish video game designer, kind of a Sharon Stone style role, and she's really good in it. The two have strong chemistry with some palpable sexual tension between them, adding to the film considerably. The supporting parts are pretty juicy, with Willem Dafoe stealing scenes as a gas station worker named Gas, who gives Law his first gaming implant. Shockingly, Existence is the only time that Defoe has worked with Cronenberg, although he's been eager to change that, admitting in an interview that he pesters Cronenberg all the time for other roles in his movies and really wanted to be in The Dangerous Method. Meanwhile, the late Ian Holmes sports a thick accent as one of Lee's allies. Or is he? Um, I hear this ridiculous story uh, about some fatwa against you. Also look out for Don McKellar, Callum Keith Rennie, Christopher Eccleston, and in a very tiny role, a young Sarah Pauly. Maybe this was one of her first adult parts. The sparse score is by Cronenberg regular Howard Shore, while his regular DP Peter Shishinsky gives the movie a gritty look that looks kind of like an industrial film, which was something that was actually kind of Cronenberg's trademark. His movies were never particularly glamorous on a visual level. Instead, they always were kind of stripped down, and it's a striking contrast to his own son, Brandon Cronenberg, whose films are very stylized. Worth noting, Brandon Cronenberg's upcoming film Possessor, starring Andrew Riseborough and Christopher Abbott, plays very much like a sequel to Existence, with Jennifer Jason Leigh even playing a major supporting role. This all adds up to a pretty intriguing, underseen little sci-fi gem that's well worth tracking down. Check it out! Until next time, this is Joe Blow Videos with the best movie you never saw.